Hello everybody, this is Jim Valentine with Coil Audio and this is Mike Mogus. We're here at his studio ARC here in Omaha, Nebraska. Came up here to shoot some sound samples, do a little bit of instructional video with all our preamps. He has the largest collection we know of in close proximity, <laughs> so we figured it'd be a quick jaunt up here. But uh, we'll be going over all of them, our new CA-70, the CA-286s, and we'll be listening back through them on his Wicked Neve console. All right, so we're just gonna start with the basic, basic setup for this guy. Normally when I start with them, inputs, outputs all the way down, input will do at zero. Standard position for these two guys is zero. 12 o'clock on the negative feedback. So let's bring it up so we can hear it. We're starting with the overheads. Here's overhead left. So you can hear it's pretty crispy because there's no pad involved right now. So I'm gonna drop it back a little. A little bit of that distortion is maybe cool. It's maybe a little too wussy, huh? Let's get a little crispiness on it. All right, so then we'll just set the, the overall output here to make sure we're not clipping Pro Tools. That seems pretty good. And then let's hear our negative feedback. What happened? Well, it just increases, it's pulling more into the mic. It's changing the frequency response, but it's also just, it's making the mic more sensitive, so it's pulling more stuff in, more room, more of the low, quiet, ambient stuff. You hear more of the tube. You hear more of the tube. It's canceling out less of the distortion. When you're doing that, you're trying to cancel out the tube harmonics. As you pull this back, you know, engine, the guys who were designing these things would want it down here to create, you know, make all the distortion go away, but... Distortion, I mean engineer distortion, not guitar pedal distortion. That sounds hot to me. So let's go ahead and get our other side set the same way. Plus six. Somewhere around there. And then also awesome. Just nicer, a little cleaner. Just a little bit backs it up. Not as in your face. So good, just more open, and you know you can look at the waveform. You can actually see that just clipping the transients and pulling the more you know more meat of the stuff in. So. Tube saturating to the real level, almost like a compressor. Absolutely, like almost like instantaneous limiting. It just puts this nice little round edge on your overheads. So let's see how our level is. It's something that's missing without tape machines. Well, yeah, you know when you use exactly. To cut on tape, you didn't worry about that. It would just automatically shave it off for you. Since I made the transition from tape to digital and started using it more than tape, I found the more tube stuff I used, the more I liked the way it sounded. It gave me that that, that saturation that tape gives me. And it's gotta, it's gotta be tubes and transformers. There's solid state stuff that does it too. The tubes, I think, have the nicest onset of that limiting. It's, you always see this nice little rounded edge as opposed to this little sharp. Yeah, instantaneous. I'm into that sweeter sound. Right, I think that's the overheads. Alright, so here comes the kick drum. Again, just kind of starting with everything kind of stock. We'll find get our input set first. So you can again hear that saturation of the front end. Sounds great. And you can hear how, you know, some of the benefit of clipping that front end is it'll pull pull more of the sound in there. It'll pull more of the bleed that's going on. I think I like that again, also really nice and open. Let's see what the negative feedback does. I love it when it pulls all that stuff in. I mean, that's pretty hot, but you're just opening it back up a little bit. I don't even, yeah, I don't even want to mess with that. It sounds fine. Let's check our level. Lovely. Cool. Can we hear just the snare drum real quick? Again, 
and I've just got it kind of stock. And usually the snare drum needs a pretty big pad if you don't want it to crap out, which... Let's get that little splatty distortion on it. All right. So it's just, you know, you can almost set it to where it's just clipping the tip or the whole meat. Again, I think I'm into that more openness that's happening. All right. And let's move on to the snare bottom real quick. So that's a KM56 underneath the snare. Again, I've got this kind of flat out. Nice. Let's go back to stock again real quick. Okay. That's cool. Now, if we ran this into another channel, it would explode like crazy. That's pretty awesome. How do you do that? You literally, just, you literally just come out of one channel and go right into another channel with it in line mode. And you can use it as a two-stage distortion box if you want. All right, let's see here. I think maybe... Again, I don't know if I'd necessarily want to hammer them that much. I like it kind of open sounding. All right. Lovely. Let's get some sounds in there. I'm working some toms. So again, it's always the gain structure. So let's start with the rack here. That's pretty cool. Again, it's like a little instantaneous limiter for your rack tom when you clip that sucker. Let's do that. <laughs> Yeah, it really pulls the, the cymbal bleed and stuff in as you open up that negative feedback. Keep coming back a little. Hot. So usually if you've got the input pad all the way up, you're going to want to be backing the output way down. All right. So let's, can we hear the floor tom real quick too? They're both in there. Oh, sweet. Oh, that's me. Here we go. So let's go with a similar thing. No, that's good. Hello. So I'm actually going to back that guy down a little bit. Let's turn him off for a second. Why not? Got sustain. Let's see here. That seems pretty sweet. It's almost exact same settings. Sweet. And then next up is the Steger microphone, which is kind of up over the kick drum. In tight though. In tight. Again, I'm starting with a stock. This is one of our prototypes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Totally opens up the ribbon. Yeah, Sounds great. All right. Yeah. And these were over on 286s with these guys. These guys were all the CA70s. So uh, the 47. Oh, yeah. So this was actually one of our very first prototypes that we sent up here for Mike to play with. It's got extra positions on the low end. 
So that's a U47. Again, let's check our input structure, input game structures. Let's That's good too, man. A little bit more open. Yeah, let's just go ahead and pull a little bit more of that room in, opening up that feedback. This is actually a CA-70. Yeah, it's a prototype. What you see, Joel? It's a CA-70. All right, and last, the rooms. Oh, nice. All right. So let's just go with one side. So we're over to the 286s, and these are a little bit more subtle in the negative feedback and the tone shaping than the, the uh, CA-70 is, just because the circuit's different. The negative feedback is utilized different in, in both of them. So this tends to be a little bit more reactive with these guys. As you pull the negative feedback out, the high and the low tilting it, it becomes less effective, almost hardly effective at all. But let's hear... Uh... So let's... And these are Josephson's, Josephson Omnis, I believe. I can't remember what the model number is. That's pretty awesome. So again, yeah, man. So that's just slam in the front end, which is, if you look at the waveform, it'll end up just looking totally squared off. So super open close mics, blow up stuff as it gets further and further away. All right, cool. Yeah, let's put them all together. You want to pull them all up? It's gonna get a All right, so we're just gonna. All right, so Mike's gonna go ahead and push all this stuff up on the console and we'll see what we got.